Okay, this is going to be some examples and practice for you for section 7.4. So the first example we're doing is number 38 out of the exercises, and I have the picture here. It is the 2 square root of x curve, and you notice it's highlighted right here. And this is the area, or the section of the curve that we're going to revolve around the axis and find the surface of revolutions area. So we're basically finding the area of this part of a cone that's flattened out. So the formula for finding surface of revolution area is S equals 2 pi times the integral from A to B of R of X square root of 1 plus f prime of x quantity squared dx. Now, in the case of this particular graph, my r of x is going to be the distance from my curve to the x-axis. which is just the value of my function, so r of x is equal to 2 square root of x. And then we have to figure out what f prime of x is, so we're going to do f prime of x, which is the derivative of 2, oops, that should be d dx, of 2x to the 1 half. Now change it to x to the 1 half because it's easier to take the uh, derivative of x to the one-half. So when we do this derivative, we get one-half times x, oops, one-half times two, and then x changes to the negative one-half, because we subtract one from the exponent. So that gives us x to the one negative one half because the two and the one half cancel each other out. So now we're ready to plug into our formula. So we have s equals the integral and this one on this one we have an integral from four to nine and the graph shows us that part and it is rx, which is 2 square root of x. I left off the 2 pi in the front. And then times the square root of 1 plus my f prime of x, which is x to the negative 1 half, quantity squared, dx. Now we have to do a little bit of algebra for this. So we're going to do a couple things. We're going to take this two and pull it out front because we like to keep all our constants in the front of the integral. And then we're going to take my square root of x and my square root of the stuff under here under the root and we're going to combine them together because they are both under square roots so we can multiply them together so when we take the square root of x times the square root of 1 plus it ends up being x to the negative 1 we get the square root of x because the x times the 1 and then plus x times x to the negative 1 is 1. So we get plus 1 and then dx. So this all of a sudden became a relatively easy to integrate function because this is just 4 pi times the integral from 4 to 9 of x plus 1 to the 1 half dx. And since it's an x, not an x squared or anything else, we don't have to worry about the derivative of the stuff inside. 
So we're going to integrate. We get 4 pi, again, still on the outside, times x to the plus 1 to the 3 halves, because we add 1 to our exponent, and then we have to multiply by the reciprocal of the exponent, so 2 thirds. And then that's going to be evaluated from 4 to 9. Now again, I'm going to bring the 2 thirds out to the front, so I'll end up with 8 pi over 3 in front. And then I have to evaluate x plus 1 to the 3 halves from 4 to 9. This gives us 8 pi over 3 times 9 plus 1 to the 3 halves minus 4 plus 1 to the 3 halves. which is 8 pi over 3 times 10 to the 3 halves minus 5 to the 3 halves. And we're going to get a decimal approximation for that, which is 171.258. Now I would like you to try this problem, pause the video, work the problem, and then check back with me for the answer. Okay, now we have worked out the example. So we have our function y equal 3x, which is just a line, and we're doing the integral from 0 to 3. And we're revolving this line about the x-axis, which is going to make a cone. And our r of x is just the distance from the function to the x-axis, and our f prime of x is the derivative of 3x, which is 3. So we plug into our formula, we get s equals 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 3 of 3x square root of 1 plus 3 squared dx. Now when we evaluate the square root, we end up with a square root of 10. So we have 2 pi integral from 0 to 3 of 3x square root of 10 dx. So what I decided to do is pull both the 3 and the square root of 10 out in front. So I have 6 square root of 10 pi times the integral from 0 to 3 x dx, which makes the integral really easy. When you integrate x, you get 1 half x squared. And so then I pulled out the 1 half to get 3 square root of 10 pi times x squared evaluated from 0 to 3. And when I evaluated that, I got 9. So I have 3 square root of 10 pi times 9, which is 27 square root of 10 pi. OK, the next example is number 44 out of your textbook. And it is the function y equals 9 minus x squared. And we're going to revolve the piece of this function, which is indicated by the line around the y-axis this time. Now unlike other revolutions, our surface area formula doesn't change when we're revolving around the y versus when we're revolving around the x. So our surface area formula again for this problem is s equal 2 pi times the integral from a to b of r of x times the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. Now in this case, our r of x is now the distance from the y-axis out to our function. So 
So this is our r of x, which is just the x value. So r of x for this circumstance is x. And f prime of x, when we take the derivative of 9 minus x squared, we get negative 2x. So we need to plug into our formula. This is equal to 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 3, because that's the x's we're covering, and it is r of x, which is x, times the square root of 1 plus negative 2x quantity squared dx. And it gives us 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 3 of x square root of 1 plus 4x squared dx. Now this problem has got to be solved using substitution. So we're going to let u be our 1 plus 4x squared, the stuff under the radical. And du is going to be 8x dx. Since we have an x and a dx, we're going to want to make our substitution be just x dx over here. So we're going to take one eighth of both sides and we'll get one eighth du equals x dx so that we can substitute into our formula. So we get two pi, and again, I'm not going to change the bounds of integration, but they would change for u. So we have the square root of u, which I'm going to write as u to the one half. Oh, we have a one eighth in front. And that's du. Now, as I've done in the past, I'm going to take the one eighth out to the front. So that ends up giving us pi over four, because two over eight is one fourth. The integral from zero to three of u to the one half du. When we integrate, we get u to the 3 halves. We have to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2 thirds. We're evaluating it from 0 to 3. We're going to again take 2 thirds out to the front. So we end up with 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6 times u, and I'm going to go ahead and not write it as u, I'm going to write it as 1 plus 4x squared, uh, the squared goes in there, to the 3 halves from 0 to 3. So we're going to substitute in and we'll get pi over 6 times 1 plus 4 times 3 squared to the 3 halves minus 1 plus 4 times 0 squared to the 3 halves which gives us pi over 6 times 37 to the 3 halves minus 1 to the 3 halves, which is just 1. So it's pi over 6, the exact answer is 37 to the 3 halves minus 1, 
times pi over 6. And when I approximate my answer, I get 117.319.